Hi everyone, Paul from International Scale Modeler. Welcome to part one of our Taranga Saab GA37 Vigan build. Um, open to build this over a series of parts. Uh, not sure how many parts yet, we'll see how many we need when we get there. Uh, as per the F15 build, uh, the Great War Hobby one I did last time, um, we won't be focusing necessarily on specific techniques. Um, if there's anything different, we will I will show how they're done. But if you want to see basic techniques of masking canopies, uh, doing washes, etc., have a look at the 109 videos um, and see the techniques in there rather than me have to explain them again here because that's just going to drag on. So if you're unsure of anything, either ask on Facebook or the forum um, and somebody will find a specific link on a video or just go for all the uh, uh, Airfix 109 videos because they're my technique videos so they'll show you basic airbrushing, pre-shading, masking, cockpits, scribing, sanding, filling, etc. So I'm going to do this assuming you've already watched those or you know what you're doing rather, should I say. Um, and that's just going to save time for the build. So you won't see me building every single stage of this. I'll come, we'll come in at specific points. Uh, I'll do a bit of work off camera as well. Just so we can speed through the build a bit. I don't want to be filming every single aspect of this build. I'm sure guys who are a bit more experienced don't want to be seeing every single aspect of me painting every single part and what have you so I will pick the specific points the cockpit's a fuselage I'm not, not going to say you know there's one video there's part two we're built but I'm going to definitely not space out as much so we'll see how we get on so you've seen the review if you've watched it uh, it's a fantastic kit I'm really excited to build it uh, I've been waiting on the aftermarket to arrive which has finally arrived it came uh, beginning of the uh, end of last week sorry it came I uh, had a look through, there's a few bits uh, I'm not going to need because um, the different variants and what have you and a few things I need to get as well, which we'll go through now. But back to the same overhead camera angle, so I've got my normal overhead here and then we've got this one which zooms in on my fingers. So there's two overhead cameras uh, and what I'll do, in fact on the side camera, I'll show you. So there you go, there's both of them, one's here, one's there. Both on my lights, both on Gorilla Pods uh, type uh, tripods. Uh, as you can see, the back ones aim slightly forward and the front ones aim slightly back, so they get the same spot. So as simple as that. And what that allows then is me to have the shot like this, and rather than me mucking about up on top, zooming in every time, getting the wobbly camera off the light, I can keep them both zoomed in specific points, and obviously you guys can see a where I've got on the wide shot, and I can just pick when I'm editing to zoom in straight away on the close shot. Uh, I got good feedback on the review because uh, that's the first time I used it, so I'm hoping to keep using it. I've been looking for a third part of this film uh, camera for a while. Uh, tried a few positions, didn't like them. This one will stick. So kit, enough waffle off me. Uh, actually, you've seen the review; it's a great kit. I've been waiting on a few uh, aftermarket parts to arrive. These boxes are so tight. There we go. So we'll pop that off. Check that to one side. Aftermarket. As you can see, I've got quite a bit. I'll leave the instructions in there. We'll leave the kit to one side. So we'll start off with cockpit. I've got two uh, Maestro models photo etch sets for them. Um, now Maestro models is another part of Tarangus, so they're producing the photo etch for it. As you can see, we've got a zoom set for the Vigan D slash DI. And just the standard sort of Vigan interiors. This is one we'll be using more than likely. There's me bringing it up to the camera so you can look. Jeez, forgetting. So if we go to the other camera, you can see there's a very slight variance between them both, just for the slightly different variants. There's literally nothing in it, it's just a few very slight differences in both of them. Uh, and to be honest, I actually forget what the difference was now. Let me have a quick look. Slightly different instrument panels. I think, to be honest. There's literally a slightly different co side consoles as well. So there's not much in them really difference wise, but we'll probably be using this one. So as you can see, it's very nice quality PE. Uh, that may seem familiar to a few of you guys, that typical writing on top who they're produced by. So they're obviously made because they're made in the Czech Republic. So two and two together you can figure out who that is. So it's typical, uh, I'm assuming it's self-adhesive. It usually is. We'll find out when we get building that, which would be probably one of the first steps. Uh, next up, we've got the metal landing gear struts, which always a worthy uh, addition to any kit because the plastic ones, I'm not saying these will, but they put up a lot of strain, especially to start to add aftermarket, so they're nice as well. Nicely cast in white metal, so they're a nice addition as well. 
Uh, next up we have the thrust reverser doors. Now these are very nice. The kit parts are nice. Ambulance in the background. But as you can see the faux switch parts are really nice. So they're going to add a very nice bit of detail to it as well. There's the numbers there as well in case you want to see them. Again, all available from myself and Lee at umpretail.com. All the aftermarkets on there. We've got the exterior and air brakes PE set, which again, there's a number at the top. We come and look at the PE, very high quality PE. It's actually the back side of this because I've had this one open. Having a little nose. And again, you've got your instructions inside which tell you where everything goes. Next up, uh, I did ask for more than sadly. Um, this is the wrong type because I believe the normal uh, Vigan doesn't have launches, just have missiles. So I need to look into. Um, but I don't think we'll be using these, and this is where I need to add some missile sets, probably from Ares, which is going to cost me a little bit of money, but they're worth it because they can handle a lot of detail. Um, so we'll probably not use those, but again, they're all available from our website. Uh, canopy mask, very important, I think. Easy enough to do yourself, but these save a lot of time and I think give a neater finish as well. So again, you can tell where these have probably come from as well. Uh, again, uh, Maestro Models release them in their own name. Um, most importantly, this was one thing I was dreading. Well, not dreading, anticipating was doing this splinter cam. It's a four-colour multi-tone splinter cam, so it's four layers of masking. And I was thinking, oh my god, I've got to cut all that out. But no, Maestro Models have came out with their own... Uh, masking set for this so three stages three masking sheets as you can see uh, pre-cut laser cut with the actual stencil uh, sorry the masking data on there as well so you can see where everything goes and hopefully it's not going to take a long time that will uh, save me quite a bit of work in the uh, in the long run I hope so some fast, fantastic aftermarket there and as I say that is the scheme I want to go for because I think it looks absolutely fantastic. So there's all the aftermarket. I'm going to put that all safely to one side. If we lay it out, you can see we have got quite a bit of it. You don't have to go overboard, but we thought we'd build do yeah, <laughs> we're building this for ourselves, so why the hell not? Chuck it all in and let's see what we can make it. So put that safely to one side. So, I've come into this blind today, I haven't prepared, because I normally come ahead, look at the instruction book, and think, right, that's what we'll do today. So we're literally going to jump in at the deep end, pop that in there, sprues are all there to my left, uh, we're going to jump in and see what the first step is, whether we want to do that first step, or whether we're going to move on to something else. First step is cockpit. Now, with having the PE, I'm going to have to have that working alongside with these instructions. Now, have you seen that SU30 I'm building, the 132 thing? That thing is huge and that's got more PE than you can ever believe. And uh, you really have to be on the ball to where everything's going. Now the PE isn't self-adhesive, which is good and bad because when I was using the self-adhesive stuff, I was finding it was coming off anyway. So I think I'd rather stick this in. Uh, super glue, PVA, some people use clear to stick it in. Um, We'll see what bits and where they are and what they require that way. If it's a small bit, I'll probably super glue them in. If it's a larger part, I'll probably PVA them just to make sure we get in the right space. So, you're going to need these separate instructions off your PE, and you're going to have to keep these side by side with your kit instructions. And this is exactly why to see what is needed. And where, so as you can see, the first step in the instructions is the ejector seat, and then we've got some aftermarket P to add to the ejector seat. So you basically need to get it all uh, built, painted, weathered, actually not weathered, sorry, built, painted, stick the aftermarket P as shown here, where it's required, then weather it, do whatever to it, so it all looks uniform together, and it does add a lot of detail. Now, standard P instructions, red means remove, I'll go to the front where it shows it, so there's the key. So, blue is a photo edge part, black is the original kick parts, red are parts to be removed, so as you can see the front of the instrument panel needs taking off, and green is fill. Parts to remove are normally where the P sticks over, so you need a flat surface, you've got to get rid of all the standard kit uh, raised detail. Um, the only one on the seat is literally on the side of the ejector rails as it shows right there. Those red parts and taken off, and I find the easiest way of taking them off, ow, as he catches himself with it, is a sharp chisel. 
Uh, this is one of the master tool chisels. Uh, these things are awesome. I use them all the time because they are razor sharp, as I've just found out, cut myself. Um, and they make short work of doing them. Because they're angled, you can get the perfect angle and take the plastic off really quickly. So, we'll keep that to one side. We'll move the packaging out of the way. Like I say, totally blind today. I've not come in. I normally way plan ahead where I'm going to film. Uh, I've just thought, right, we'll open the book and we'll get to it. So, like I say, the first page we've got the ejector seat, the cockpit, and the part. If you build out the box, it's quite quick and simple to assemble. I think there's four or five parts there. With having the uh, extra PE, that is going to take a little longer, but it'll add a lot of detail to it as we go. So, we'll start with the seat, and that is calling for 212 and 211. So, what we'll do is we'll get some of these sprues out of the way. Move the clear parts because they're going to get run over by my creaky chair. So, we don't need those. What I like to do is go for the box, find the sprues that you're going to need, any you don't need, like these fuselage. There's the cockpit there, so we'll keep that reminder for next time. Move them out of the way, get them well and truly out of the way. So nothing runs the risk of getting damaged while you're working. So, simply, because this is a single seater, we only need one of these. So, 212 and 211. Parts are nicely clearly marked. Identical numbers on both. So fairly simple to find and cut off. So yeah, always double check your numbers, don't start cutting things off because where I do I've got a shelf up there that's full of bits of plastic where I've cut off the wrong part. Not realised and come back and stuck it down. Just double checking in those P instructions. Yep, yeah, we do want these, so we want 210 as well. Which is one of these. Two thirteen, which is one of those, and two oh nine, which is one of the ejector rails from the back. So I think they're all the parts for the seat. Obviously, you've got spares there. Sorry, I'm out of shot. You've got spares there. Should you need them? So if you screw one up, you've got another one. <laughs> That's the way I look at it anyway. Uh, these parts are going to need a little bit of a clean up. So it's a little bit of a sand. I'm going to show me cleaning this up, gluing it together, we'll let it all dry, come back and um, then we'll start looking at PE I think and seeing what's going to be needed. Good old UMP sander, make short work of everything. One done. Well I'd say I like to cut them off the sprue, you can see the top just there. We have a little spigot of plastic still. Cut it as close as you can without damaging the part. And a light sand. Same underneath. Nice and close. Give it a light sand. Once you've sanded it, come with your polisher. As you can see, I could do a new one. Polish it with the green. So you sand it with the green, polish it with the white, and doing that you end up with plastic that looks brand spanking new, and like it has been cut. So you do that for each part. So I'll tend to go around, trim them all off. So you get the part you want. Now I've seen a few people building this. The Patrick's on the forum. He's uh, I think he's very nearly built this to be honest. He's been a a great inspiration to me. Seeing what you can get out of this kit. There you go, we've got a very tricky part there, so we'll have our chisel, which is gonna be perfect size. Just get that little nick in now, because I'm still in shot just about. Uh, yeah, Patrick's been uh, building this for a while now, and uh, it's been great to watch it coming together. And there's a guy on Facebook for the life of me, I cannot remember where now, but I've been following his build, and that's been coming along very well. 
as well. Right, so there we go. Um, the fit, the kit, everyone keeps telling me it's fantastic. Uh, the guy on the Facebook page was even saying that they didn't even need any filler anywhere, so that's always a, a bonus. So it shouldn't be too, too taxing to build, fingers crossed. Right, so, they're all cleaned up, that's the one I cleaned up, is it? That's the one I hadn't, so again, two step, use your sander to sand the major parts off, then use the green sander on the white polisher to clean your parts up, and then when you paint them they don't look rough. They should look like you haven't even painted them. We go two locating lugs just there and there. Nice and simple. There's going to be a little seam at the top. But will it be covered? It might well be. That little seam at the very top will be covered. There's a slight seam in the headrest there that is going to need a little bit of attention. So we'll get to that when we need it. And we'll use our choice of glue, which will be tie your extra thin a little line in there at the capillary action pull it through give it a little bit of a squeeze not too much got my uh, dogs near today and uh, one of them started to snore so I don't think it's me it's a Labrador Snoring. Like I say, there's going to be a bit of a seam on that back headrest there, so for that reason, I may leave off this top part, which still needs a bit of a trim there, actually. Does it? That's supposed to be there? No idea. So that should fit. I don't know, it does fit in there like that. So that bit fits in there. As you can see, just below it on the headrest, there's a very, very slight gap. So what we'll do, once it's dry, we'll throw a little bit of filler in there, give it a little bit of a sand, Come back to it, sand it off once it's dry. Job done. Now, this should fit in there, which it does to absolute perfection. So, no problem there. What we'll do is we'll put a little bit of glue down the sides so that capillary action carry it down. And then avoid any glue, push it in, I use my fingernail if I can. Just make sure you don't get any fingerprints on it. And we're coming underneath. Make sure we're focused. Pop a little bit under there. Quite a boring part to watch, I know, but I've always been quite interested in how these go together. There are aftermarket seats available. Uh, the resin. I think they're from Maestro Models, actually, funnily enough. Um, so it would be interesting to see what the kit part are like compared to a resin one. Uh, we don't have the resin one. Which way we go there, it's apparently it's that way. So we're locating the tab for that. Go into that, no. There's a hole at the bottom for it. So we'll do we push it up just till it's poke out the bottom a tiny bit. We'll just add a couple of spots of glue. And the reason for that is if it is in the wrong place, all we need to do later is come back, reactivate the glue, and we can move it again. Obviously because it's 
cylindrical, make sure it's in flat. Pop up around the top there actually. There we go. So that's basically the seat assembled, the kit part. Now I've got several bits of PE to go on this, which include this green part here at the back, which acts as a cushion I assume. Hard to see. We've got belts for it, um, there is other detail parts, so there is a bit to go on. We've got a little bit of detail on the side we need to remove, it's literally there, if you can see that. Right where my thumbnail is, just at the back, so it's a case of getting the chisel, removing all that. I can't quite see why it's saying to remove it, because I can't see any aftermarket go in there. So what we'll do, we'll put that by here, and as we get through the PE, then I'll remove it. So we'll leave that be as it should. I'm going to glue this in, sod it. As long as they're poking out a little bit at the bottom, because it's showing it locates. Uh, where did I just see? There. Shows it locates that little hole there just by the 201, if you can see. So if I leave it sticking out just enough, that should be perfect. So there's the seat done. Like I said, we've got a little seam at the top to fill. I'll let this dry, give it half an hour or so to dry. We'll put a bit of um probably the layer putty in there, give it a sand, and that's job done. That can then be primed, um, painted in the appropriate colour, which you need to look into actually. Um, and then we can uh, look at the PE. So we'll put that to one side. Well, I've got the cockpit next. So the seat's done. I had the cockpit before. It's there. So there's the tub. Now the kit tub isn't too bad. There's uh, switches and what have you in there. Um, there's also um, side detail on the um, actual cockpit itself. The instrument panel isn't too bad either. I showed this in the review. Actually not too bad, you could paint that up, put a little bit of detail in there. But I think you'll agree that once the black background goes on first and this one goes on after, that's going to look a lot better. So that's the beauty of these. Uh, and obviously sidewall detail is here and there as well. So all this raised surface needs taken off and it's replaced with that sidewall detail. Obviously you've got to get it all painted up first and ready. So what we'll do is I will show you how we remove a little bit of surface detail then we will get these parts all stripped of all the surface detail painted up and we'll come back and start putting some PE on so like I say using your chisel uh, not necessarily be one this big I'm just going to double check something here is there so what we'll do we'll do this We'll do the side wall detail here. You can see there, all the raised buttons, switches, knobs, etc. That all needs to go because in the instructions, you can see there, it's telling us to remove all that so we can stick the PE on top. So that's what we'll do. So what we'll do, we'll zoom in a little bit. Hopefully we can stay in focus. I won't lose a finger. And what we'll do is, if you angle the chisel to its perfect angle and then just work it, pushing it in slowly, all right, to give it a wiggle, you can see there it goes. It's a case of just going over it until it's gone over the knobs. Basically, so you cannot feel anything else there. Keep it in focus. There we go. And the idea of this then is that photo etch. Has a nice smooth flat surface to adhere to. So I just that back a bit, as you can see, all that detail is now gone, and then we come in a sanding stick. Just give it a light sand. So it's perfect. Now, use a rough stick. I use the um, 
I think this is the 220 uh, 220 grit sander because it's not perfectly smooth it does leave the surface rough and that'll give the glue a key to stick to so it's a case of on this that needs doing that side the front there's a couple of big raised bits there as well they're going to be taken off and then on the instrument panel all that raised detail will need to be removed as well. So I'll do that off camera and we'll come back in a minute. Just so you're not sat there staring at me removing all these parts. And then we'll come back when it's all off. Okay, there we go. There's all the uh, surface detail removed. Uh, the cockpit's done. Let me just get this to focus. Why bounce back a little bit. Come on. As you can see, all removed. Filed off. It's piled off. Chiseled off. Then sanded smooth. Like I say, I left a little bit of roughness there to give the glue a bit of uh, surface to key to. And we've got the, uh, the control stick in there as well. I did glue in place the foot pedals for controls and I realised there's actually PE ones in the kit, so quickly took them out. Um, there's no reference to removing the mounting point for them, which is a hole in there. So we'll leave that in situ uh, and there's any problems with remove related later date. Uh, seat, all that side detail has been removed up there. Uh, looking at it, I could probably do another little sand we use a, I'll do it now actually while I'm chatting to you guys. Uh, chiseled it off, um, gave it a quick file with the 240 grit, and that got rid of all that detail. Uh, the reason for doing that is it gives you new ejector rails in PE. I wasn't sure before going through, I've had a look. Uh, we also filled the head restraint a little bit more, uh, and this is ready now for a bit of primer. Uh, the instrument panel, I've done the same, so let me stand this quickly. Uh, took all the detail off, but look at the instructions, and I'll show you them in a second. Um, it, it's telling you not to actually use the full plastic instrument panel. So there you go, there it is. All the details off, as you can see. Uh, it's all flush, it doesn't look it, but it actually is. But these instructions are telling us... If we can find it again... There it is on the front to uh, cut this square section at the top further away and just glue it onto that you put that into the aircraft now that I don't know I'm not too keen on that a there's nothing positive to mount it to uh, and b it's quite flimsy so I'm going to try and mount it to the full uh, instrument panel to see what it looks like um, because it's these top parts here so those two, that goes on top of there, and then there's a surround for the screen, which is elsewhere, and I can't see it. There it is, 32, that one. Um, so, I don't know, three layers of photo etch probably would be quite sturdy, but I don't know. Um, we'll see. I'll probably just stick it on, on top of there, and we'll see what it looks like in the end. Uh, and that's it, and the foot pedals can be seen, they are there at the bottom, 37s. So they're bent once and put in place, so they're going to look great. So that's it. So what I'm going to do now off camera, I'm going to go over to the spray booth. I'm going to prime these in Badger uh, Black Primer, my primary choice now. Um, absolutely superb. Once that's dry, I'll uh, come back in and we'll spray it into Mr. Hobby 308, which is, if I can get it up, I'm not going to really think. Is this great? That's the colour the book recommends. Uh, it's a fantastic call out. At the front tells you the seat colour of the seat cushions, etc, etc, everything in there, really good, um, so instructions are really are top notch, I said that in my review, so I'm going to head over, prime it, once it's dry, we'll give it a coat of this, and we'll see what it's like, in fact, to do it fast, I'm actually prime in alkali uh, black primer instead, because that dries almost instantly, uh, I can get going, and we can come back and get the PE on. Okay, there we go, we're fresh out the spray booth, I've started applying a little bit of photo etch to the, uh, to the cockpit, I'll go through what I've done so far. I've just come to a stage now where I thought, right, I'll show that on camera just because it's a little bit of photo, it's a bit of bending, it might come in handy. Uh, the seat, uh, going through various references, I've sprayed it in uh, alkalide dull aluminium, which is this one. So we sprayed it in that. They all look a bare metal finish, but it's not shiny, so I've gone for that. I've painted the, uh, the seat cushion green which is supposed to be uh, Mr. RB319 light green. I did it in Vallejo uh, 70 sorry, 70890 or position number 90. Uh, that was a very close match to what we had and the cockpit was painted in Mr. RB308. And that's it. So there's the seat. That's ready for old photo etch. 
So, doesn't look too bad. Out of the box, a little bit plain. Once you get this P on it, it'll jazz it up a little bit. Uh, instrument panel, primed, painted. That 308, that's ready for its photo etch as well. What I started doing is we started adding a little bit of it to the cockpit tub. So as you can see, I put a bit of PE on the back and then we added this folded piece here. Now, the likes of that little tiny piece just there, I use my photo etch pliers. Because it's not really worth breaking out the bending machine for one tiny little part. But the next thing I come across I thought I'd do is the ejection seat rails, which are these bad boys. So that is the made up part. As you can see, it forms a U-shaped duct. Uh, which is perforated on the edge, looks absolutely superb, it's quite hard to see it on camera Let's see if we can catch it, there you go up on edge, that's your guide for bending it and as you cut it off the sprue excuse your fingers, come on pick it up that's how it looks as you can see just a flat piece use those perforations for the bender and then we can see where we want to bend, this is where I thought, I'll show this on camera just in case people struggle. Now you could by all means use that to do it. it come on focus, there we go. It will fit on there. Getting that bend nice and straight is quite hard so I prefer to use the bending machine. Now the way I do it is look for the edge that you need which isn't that side. It's that one with the actual bend on it. So. This is the way we need to go, I need to try and keep you guys in shot. So it's a case of line up those perforated holes with each side of the machine and what I did, I did it so I could just see the hole through there. Tighten that side up so it's nearly tight, push in so it's straight, tighten it down, push in a tab more. And the other side, so they're both perfectly the same. Like so, make sure it's locked off nice and tight. Spin it round, I'm going to use the large blade on this. We're going to put the bevel so it's down on the machine. You then push it under, push it right to the back, keep the pressure on, lift it up, one bend done, as simple as that. So if we have a look at that, it should be perfect, and it is. Absolutely spot on. Prefer turning it to the side because I can see the lines better. So exactly the same again. Side it in. Now I'm using these holes as the bending edge. Now normally it's perfect. It's got a line through it, so you can see where the bend is. So exactly the same principle. And this has got the line in it, but it's got the holes. So it's exactly the same. Whichever way you're doing it, just make sure you get right on the line where you want it because once you bend it, there's no real going back. That's it, that's perfect. So make sure nice and locked down. This is a small shot tools bender I've got, I think it's the five and a half inch. Absolutely brilliant tool, not cheap. But it'll last you a lifetime. I have to be honest, this would bevel both edges. So push it under again, fold it up, 90 degrees, job done. As easy as that. And there we go, one perfectly formed ejection rack on. Focus. There you go, you can see that there, perfect. So there's those two done. They then sit in the back. Here, like so, they need measuring, so I'm not going to pop those in just yet. I'll probably have to use the seat to line it up, but that's where they sit in there. And then that's that bit of the tub done, and then we've got the side panels to pop on, which we'll do. Actually, I'll probably show you that now, to be honest, and then I'll crack on the seat. The seat's got multiple P parts all over it, so I'm not going to show that on camera because they're all very small, very fiddly. But we'll come back and we'll show it all together. Uh, the other thing I painted off camera as well, we primed up the cockpit tub as well. So that's, that was primed in the black as you can see and then sprayed up above 
on the 308 uh, interior grey colour again. So that's ready for any parts. I didn't know there was going to be black in there like anti-glare, but looking at pictures online of real aircraft, they seem to be grey, quite dirty as well, so you've got a lot of grime in them. So what we'll do now is we'll do one of these side panels, so I need these instructions again. I don't think I'll need to bend the machine. So what we're going to do is we will pick one of these. As you can see here, we will go for that one there. So as you see, grind off all that which you've already done, you've got two parts to this one, a uh, very slight bend and another piece to pop on on top. So if we find number three, I'll show how I remove the PE because we might as well because I don't do it very often on camera. So number three is there. So what we do, got the small shop tools cut off tool which is a piece of perspex as a base, a piece of perspex on top to hold it, using a curved blade. Cut through the fret, top, bottom, and sides. Now, the idea of having this thing on top is that the, the PE doesn't then ping away on you, which doing large parts like this isn't too much of a hassle. But doing smaller parts, let me get the top on these, do I? I didn't do that one. Uh, doing smaller parts, they can ping away when you cut them off. So it can be worth um, just yeah, get one of these. They're about six quid. There's something like that bit of P. There we go. They're about six pounds to buy. Yeah, three of these, double sided, um, and that thing itself. So you don't get a lot of your money, but it does work very well. Uh, any excess can be removed, and I'll have a use scissors like so. Followed by my diamond file, which I think Lee reviewed not long ago. It might seem tedious, but it's worthwhile taking your time because these are highly visible parts. So it's worthwhile just taking that time to make sure they're all cleaned, smooth, and ready to go. So that's that part. Now we need to put a slight kink in it, which by the looks of it goes. Right about there, so what we'll do, we'll dry fit it, fit it, we'll dry fit it, we'll push, give that a little bend, partly made, there it is just there, now I can see where that is, I'm just going to put my nail there and just give it a little bit more of a bend, don't go too much because these are painted so you're probably going to chip your paint off if you're not careful, and what we're going to do is flick one of those ejector rails because I forgot they were in there. Uh, idiot. Well, that's what I put in there as well. The foot pedals are in. They were folded and put in before. Um, so, super glue. Um, toss up between PVA, super glue. I'm going super glue because it's instant. So, a couple of blobs, spread it out, and then a couple of blobs. Up from two, pick it up. The smaller part, use one of our pick up pencils. If it's a larger one, use your hand, get the back in, push down exactly where you want before you commit to pushing that front part down. Make sure that back's on properly, and then get the front down. Hold it. Give it a good squeeze, quite slow set, I think it's five to yeah, five to fifteen second super glue. This is my favorite recommended by Cohen, my favourite super glue I've ever had. Absolutely awesome stuff. So you get a little bit of time to maneuver the part round, which is great. Just keep pressing it down. Do a little bit of super glue up that edge. So what we need to try and do is just feed it in. A little gap there on the edge. So we get rid of most of that. Obviously this is tight up against the fuselage, so you ain't really gonna see that if you do get any super cool on that, take the excess off, cotton bud, and then we'll push it down with our finger. 
hold it and that should do so like I say some of these are self adhesive this one's not not the end of the world as you can see though it's a perfect match for the colour absolutely perfect um, and those instruments look well the buttons sorry look absolutely brilliant so there we go so that's the PE so I've got another part to put on this side a little small part sorry cut our sticks coming off I've got a small part to put on this side now I'm stuck to it there we go one more small part to put to this side there's another big piece of the other and a small one I think that's it for the actual tub itself several parts on the um, seat and then we have uh, there's all the seat parts all on the top so quite a few as you can see uh, there's those ejector rails we just made, they stick on, there's a couple of other parts that go on the back and then we've got several other parts that go on the inside of that fuselage we painted up so I'll get all that done uh, and once that's done we'll come back have a look and see where we're at okay so there we go there's all the cockpit fully assembled all the photo etches done uh, it's been given a wash um, we've got it all glued in position, I've test fitted it, it all seems to fit in perfectly and we've got the actual fuselage photo etch done at both sides as well um, I've missed a little bit off the side of the fuselage um, because I think they're going to interfere with the canopy they are the rails for along the edge to fit on like so now sadly I think that is going to interfere with the canopy so I've taken them back off if you're going to leave the canopy open leave them on because they are finished to the edge but because I'm going to um, leave my canopy shut more than likely I don't want them interfering with the canopy when I try and put it in position. So there's that, we've got the carpet itself, the seat, all the peas on. The peas are a vast amount of uh, interest to the seat. I come a little bit closer. So it's really transforming a standard seat. As you see, the ejector rails down the back look absolutely superb. Very nice PE. Um, and like I say, plenty of straps, harnesses, padding, the ejector pull etc on there, it looks absolutely stunning um, side panels are all done they're on, uh, now the kit shows two control sticks to the left just here uh, there's no reference to those in the PE instructions and there's no provision to fit them um, so they're going to stay off for now I'm going to look into that a little bit more if there's a problem I can pop it through the, uh, the canopy when it needs doing, it's not a drama at all so we'll see how that goes. Instrument panel again with the PE it looks totally totally different it's absolutely transformed it. Three layers of PE on there um, in the screens and the dials I've had a little bit of uh, micro scale crystal clear to give the illusion of a screen and you can get it to catch the light you can see there and it really has transformed it. It's a nice little cockpit for 48 for the PE set has really added a lot of detail to it uh, well worth the time invested in doing it which for me is literally uh, most of this afternoon so a good four or five hours worth of work now the fit there's two locating lugs inside here that the front part slots into like so once they're in position then push down on the back which pushes you fully home at the top and the front and if we get it in the right place at the top which is about there there we go there's the cockpit in position and if you look through the top it's it's rather nice really does look very smart you can ever see you're gonna be able to see quite a bit of this through the canopy glass so quite nice to see and I think it makes a very interesting office for the plane itself now there is a head-up display to go on here um, I'm not going to put that on yet because I'll end up snapping it off nothing else is going to be added to this yet until I get the rest of the aircraft done and I know for a fact that ejector pull on the top of that seat will come off at some point because it's just the nature of the beast so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to glue this in position I'm just going to put a little bit of extra thin at the top and the bottom, we'll clamp it in so it stays in position, we'll leave that to dry um, that's going to be under the film today because I think we're about 45 minutes already uh, if it's boring I'm sorry but I was going to show the cockpit built and I'm glad I did 
because it certainly looks apart. I remember boring at first getting that seat together and what have you, but it shows a stage in the build, so I don't really care to be honest. Um, if it's boring, it's boring, it's one of those. But there we go, all the top bits together. Like I say, I'm going to go that in position, and then off camera for next time, I will assemble the air intakes, which is just these two, four parts, five, sorry, five parts here. Very boring, just going to glue them all together ready. Uh, that's showing the cockpit getting put in position, and then we can join the two sides of Fusilas together. We'll do that on camera next time. Uh, and then we're on to the uh, exhaust with its uh, reverse thrusters, which we've got all in PE. And then the rear of the fuselage again. Uh, does that need to go in? Let's see, it does. I think that's going to go in before it's built. And then we get on to put the fuselage together. And hopefully, get this thing built pretty quick. So, there we go. Like I say, we'll come back next time, we get the fuselage halves together, we'll see how they fit together. Uh, I've got those intakes done off camera, ready for us, and uh, we'll get through to that exhaust. Plenty of PE for that as well, we've got a full PE set somewhere, I can grab it. There it is. We've got a full PE set for that, so that's going to add a lot of interest to it. That'll make it a lot more interesting, without a shadow of a doubt. So, there we go. Um, so yeah, like I say, I'll get that done for next time, we'll come back, part two, shouldn't be very long, and uh, we'll get those two fuselage halves together and start working on the fuselage. So there you go, thanks for watching, I hope I haven't bored you too much, uh, cracking play and I've enjoyed every minute building this today, I literally haven't put it down all day, um, putting all of my builds on the side for now, so yeah, cracking on this, and uh, really look forward to getting part two. So thanks for watching, I'll catch you guys in the forum, and I'll see you later.